Hello Factory fans, after setting up your first space platform, you might be asking, now what? Well, the next logical step is to go visit another planet. So in this video, I'm going to go through how thrusters work, how to produce fuel in space, and how to defend against meteors to create a space platform capable of sustainably and safely making it to another planet and back. To explore other planets, you'll need to research the right technology, starting with the space platform thruster. This requires white science or space science, and if you don't know how to make that, check out my white science in space video for a simple build for the space age expansion. Once you've unlocked thrusters, you can start researching planet discovery. It'll allow you to research three planets to start with, which is Gleba, Vulcanus, and Fulgora. After completing a research for a planet, you'll see that as a new destination in your space platform hub. So if you go here, it works kind of like a train. You add a station and you'll be able to see all your discovered planets over here and you can select it. And assuming you have working thrusters, you should be able to hit play and then it will go attempt to make it to that planet. So obviously the next step is we need space thrusters. Just like all your other space technologies, your space thruster can be found in the space tab of your crafting menu and it requires steel processing units and electric engines. If you want lots of thrusters, I recommend you set up an assembler to automatically produce them. They should require the same stuff as the rest of your space infrastructure. So you can consider creating an assembler in the same area as all your other space infrastructure because it'll use the same ingredients and the same belts. Now, once you've built and delivered your thruster to space, you can build them like any other space building, but there are a few requirements. First of all, the thrusters can't be rotated, so you can't just put them anywhere. You have to put them on the south side of your space platform and they need to overhang off the edge of the space platform. You you can see it'll tell you where you can build it now you can see the space thruster obviously needs some fuel and it's telling you it needs this blue stuff and this red stuff the blue stuff is oxidizer and the red stuff is fuel now both of these items can be made in chemical labs so you need to send some into space and start producing them in space the thruster fuel requires carbon and water and the oxidizer requires iron and water now, while you should already know how to make carbon and iron from previous videos, you just collect the asteroids and crush it if you didn't already know. Uh, but what is this new resource water that we have to produce in space and how can we produce water? To obtain water in space, when you unlock thrusters, you also got this technology called ice melting, which can be done in a chemical plant to turn ice into water. So you would need to set yourself up another chemical plant and under the intermediate products, you'll find this new ice melting recipe. So if you just supply one with ice, you can get water out, which can feed into these two to produce your fuel and your oxidizer along with carbon and iron. So essentially what we're saying is that using these three asteroid collectors uh, that collect ice, carbon and iron, we can produce oxidizer and fuel to fuel our thrusters. Let's see what a build might look like. Here is a very simple setup that I've done. Obviously you can make a better one than me, surely, but this is a completely functional version of a space platform that can travel to another planet. So here up the top, we have our three asteroid collectors, one collecting each type of asteroid. They feed directly into these crushers. You can see each one has its own crusher. The crushers have their own feedback system because as you remember, a crusher uh, takes an asteroid and produces the crushed result, but also can fail to crush and produce the asteroid. So you need to have a filtered thing that takes that asteroid and feeds it back into the crusher so that it doesn't jam. So this first crusher over here that's crushing uh, the ice asteroid into ice is feeding directly into an ice chemical plant and that is being melted into water. Next, on the other side, I have the asteroid collector for carbon and an asteroid collector for iron. They are also being crushed. They have their own feedback systems as well, but the result of that iron and carbon is being fed into a belt going outwards. That belt is being fed into two more chemical plants and they are producing the fuel and the oxidizer. The water is coming from the left hand side and it's being fed in as well to help create that fuel and oxidizer, which is then being stored in these storage tanks for a buffer. After going through the storage tanks, they are then directly fed into these two thrusters. Now the thrusters input outputs are super janky, so you can't just tile them on to next to each other. I'll go through a build later. But for these two thrusters, I've just got the oxidizer coming out from here, going through here, uh, and then it kind of feeds through itself, right? So it, it kind of travels through the thruster out here and then goes and loops around and feeds back into itself. Similarly with the fuel, it's going into here. It'll travel through itself, come out here, and then feed into the next one like this. It's a really annoying setup, but that's just how I've got it for now. And 
for the rest of the free space I have, um, I'm just putting in solar panels to power this entire setup. And it's that simple guys, you just need to be producing fuel and oxidizer in space however you like, and as long as you have fuel and oxidizer feeding into your thrusters, you'll be able to make it to another planet. So you just add a station and you can get your spaceship to travel to Folgora, and you can see it starts burning fuel and oxidizer and it will start traveling to the planet and it takes quite a long time to get there. Let's let this travel for a while and see what happens. Couple of things to note while you're traveling, as you're moving faster, you can see more and more asteroids come over, so your asteroid collectors will work faster, which kind of means that you'll be able to continuously produce fuel on your trip as well, but I still recommend you start with a full tank. So you can see how much by the time we get there it'll burn. But aha, we have another problem. When you reach around the halfway point, you can see these massive asteroids are coming in and they're starting to hit and destroy your space platform. That's going to be a problem, right? Eventually, you're going to run out of repair materials. And additionally, as you can see, the space platform has now been destroyed. When asteroids hit your space platform and destroy this central space platform hub, the entire platform itself gets destroyed. So now we have to tackle our first major space challenge, which is how do we defend against those gigantic asteroids? Well, it's not super complicated. You can shoot down asteroids however you like with your regular defense stuff that you use against spiders, for example, a gun turret or for example, a laser turret, right? So you can definitely do any of that stuff, but I've done some testing and I found what works best for me is just a couple of gun turrets with uranium ammo. My uranium ammo is being delivered constantly from the ground and I always ensure I have 300 uranium ammo on my space platform. Now, I ship that uranium ammo out using a filtered inserter and it just goes onto this belt and feeds these two regular gun turrets up the front of my space platform. Now, let's travel to Folgora again and see how that looks. So you can see as the large asteroids come in, the uranium ammo is making short work of all of the asteroids. Obviously, your results are going to vary depending on what bullet damage you have researched up to, the type of ammo you're using. But for me, this uranium ammo on these regular gun turrets seem to do the trick. And there we go, we have safely made it to Folgora now. And once you have made it to Folgora, you can see the asteroids stop sort of hitting your space platform and you'll be using a lot less ammo. But let's take a quick stock of what my setup actually used up to get here so you can understand how sustainably you can make it back and forth. So I started with like three and a bit stacks of uranium ammo and now I have just over two and a half stacks. So I estimate I used probably maybe about 150 uranium ammo to get here shooting down all of the asteroids. And obviously now that you're in Folgora, there's still massive asteroids that will show up every now and then. So you'll slowly deplete ammo depending on how long you stay here. In terms of fuel, you can see it was continuously producing fuel the entire time as it was shooting down asteroids and collecting stuff. Uh, and based on this and my one fuel producer, it seems to have used up about half my storage tank to get here. So I do recommend that before you leave a planet, you have full storage tanks of fuel. And that's about it. And you can see that once you get here, you can obviously land and do all sorts of stuff, but you can also make it back safely. So if I just go back to Nalvis, we can take a look at how much resources a full return trip actually uses up. So once again, we're starting with like two and a bit stacks of uranium ammo, right? All right, you can see we've now made it back to Nalvis and we can have a look at our uranium ammo. We started with like three and a half stacks and now we have like one and a half stacks. So it used about roughly 200, maybe a little bit over 200. Just bring 300 to be safe. So bringing 200 or 300 uranium ammo is all that it's going to cost us to go to, to another planet and back, which I think is a decent cost. And you can only launch 25 uranium ammo per rocket. So obviously to launch uh, 300, you're going to need uh, 12 rockets. So whatever resources you need on the ground to launch 12 rockets, whether you think that's worth it or not, that's going to be up to you. And it all depends on your factory and your requirements. Obviously, you don't have to use uranium ammo. You can use more red ammo if you prefer. Now let's just go over a couple of other design tips for alternatives you can use if you don't want to use uranium ammo, for example, or if you want to build more thrusters. Now, as I mentioned before, the thruster inputs are super annoying to deal with. So if you want an extensible thruster design, I recommend this sort of tiered design where you have all your inputs for one type of oxidizer on one side and your fuel on the other. 
you can see that the fuel is coming through here and then it's going through diagonally to feed all the thrusters that way if you need to add more and more thrusters you can just keep adding it diagonally and all the fuel will just keep being added from one side obviously on the right side the fuel will continuously go through like this diagonally but on the left side you do need to connect it this way back into the fuel system but this is sort of an extensible way to do it and the same thing happens with the oxidizer it comes in over here and it'll diagonally feed all the stuff on the opposite side and then you just connect all the oxidizers out from the same side now obviously the more thrusters you have the faster your space platform will travel which means the more asteroids will come in faster so you will need appropriate defense to deal with it thrust to waste ratio is all also a thing so you can hover over your space platform you can see how much your space platform weighs versus how much thrust you have that'll det ultimately determine how fast your space platform will travel so ensure that you have a good balance of thrust to waste ratio in terms of defense like i said before i was using uranium ammo but an alternative is obviously you can produce regular ammo yellow ammo on site so if you get another iron uh, collector you can feed iron into a crusher and have that going into a smelter to produce plates and with the plates you can create an assembler on site to create the regular magazines and you can leave your space platform idle in space and that'll just slowly stock up regular magazines in your hub and then you can feed that into more gun turrets obviously the regular magazine does a fraction of the damage of uranium ammo so you're gonna probably need more guns and you're gonna need a big stockpile of regular magazines you might need like six to seven hundred magazines to make a safe trip all the way to folgora and back but the advantage is obviously while your space platform is idle it'll just continuously produce regular magazines and if you have a full inventory of regular magazines you don't have to ship anything from the ground now being able to safely travel to a planet and back marks the beginning of your interstellar logistics network now you can land on a new planet uh, and you can also set up a sustainable supply route providing all the essential components to establish a foothold in your new planet so good luck and if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.